1997 Mazda Miata with a 1.6 liter engine and what we're going to be doing today guys is a charging system test this vehicle was brought in with a dead battery customer complaint was he was driving into work and some of the interior components stopped working the radio shut off and I believe he said his dash lights quit working as well and then the car died and would not restart Another symptom he had mentioned to me was a few days ago his tachometer quit working. Not sure if that's related or not yet. So what I want to walk you guys through is some charging system tests. So what I like to do before attacking a charging system is I like to look at a wiring diagram. There's just so many different designs out there and I need to know what I'm dealing with. I need to know if it's computer controlled or not. And so I pulled up the diagram for you guys and what we're looking at here's your alternator right here you can see it's grounded on the housing we have a solid white wire that's going to a main fuse and then that's coming directly to the battery so that's going to be your heavy cable going to the starter that's hot all the time and then we have another wire it's white with a green that's coming from the main relay that one's going to be hot and run if it's from the main relay and then we have another one that's the bulb circuit for this alternator so when we do our checks we're going to start with the heavy gauge white wire with the car running and then we'll move down the line and then we'll talk about the results of each one all right here's a shot of our alternator sitting in this location down here and what we can see in the camera right here this is our bat post that's the heavy cable that comes to the alternator and behind this hose there's a two pin connector down here Hopefully this will show up. It's right below the, it's right in this area here. And I'll get you another shot on that when I'm doing testing on that. But for now, we're going to look at the voltage level on the BAT post of the alternator. My hookups, yellow lead is going to the BAT post. That'd be my voltmeter positive lead. My negative lead for this, I am going to the valve cover, the battery is in the trunk on this car. Ideally, I'd want to go to battery negative, but I can't for this test, at least not easily. And we're looking at a voltage reading right now of 12.58. And I've had this battery charger on here for a while, so this battery should be at least halfway decently charged. I don't like this test. This isn't good enough. I want to start this car and see what kind of voltage we have on this post. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys can watch the volt meter. Okay, what we normally do is, is we check this at the battery first, and I, I skip that part, the battery's in the trunk, I'll take you back there next. You see we have 12.12, 12.11 volts on this system right at the BAT post. What that means to me is this thing's not charging. And what we want to do first is make sure we don't have a voltage drop between the battery and here. You know, really it's not necessary when you have that kind of voltage, that's pretty good, but let's check it anyway. It's procedures that are important here. So to know what my voltage drop is, I have to take another measurement, at least that's one way to do it, and subtract the two, and then I'll show you the actual power to power voltage drop test. So remember that number, 12.11 up here. Let's go back to the battery. Okay, for my lead connections back here at the battery, I have my black lead going to battery negative and my yellow lead scope positive going to battery positive. You see at the battery we have 12.16 volts. So that means we have a 0.05 50 millivolt drop on this circuit, roughly between the battery and the BAT post. What that tells us is this positive cable going to the alternator is fine. Now there's another way to do this and it would be important to know how to do this when you have changing voltages on the system, especially in light of a weak battery. If this voltage was dropping rapidly while you were doing your tests, then it's kind of hard to calculate that voltage drop unless you're monitoring the circuit directly. So to do a proper voltage drop test, what we're going to do is we're going to leave one lead on battery positive and then we're going to compare 
our voltage to the BAT T post of the alternator and I'll get you a shot up front of that. Just know that I'm gonna leave one lead on battery positive back here for this next test. And I'm gonna to have to use a jumper wire to do it because of the length we have here between the two. So I'm using a jumper wire for this because my leads aren't long enough and I'm gonna compare this side battery positive to the BAT post of the alternator. See my jumper wire connected here. Let's go up front. Here's the other end of my jumper wire. Being very careful, this doesn't touch anything metal. This is plastics that this is sitting over top of, so we're fine here. My yellow lead's connected to this. Polarity doesn't really matter here, guys. You can put your black lead here and your yellow lead on the BAT post of the alternator, or to say that differently, you can use your voltmeter positive or negative here, positive or negative up at the BAT post. It does not matter. It's kind of tough to see. You see my black lead is down there on that BAT post. And then you guys probably saw the voltmeter already. We have a 0.06 of a volt drop on this circuit. And so, again, I wish I would have shown this when the battery was weak before when we initially tested the alternator. The system voltage was dropping rapidly while we were doing our test because the battery didn't have a good charge. And the run time involved was causing voltage drops. And so when you do your measurement in the back and you measure it up front and you subtract the two for your drop, you really weren't getting a true drop reading. We were getting maybe one to two volt difference saying we had a two volt drop in the circuit, but system voltage was dropping. And so this test was needed in that scenario so you know what the proper voltage drop is on that circuit. This is a power to power voltage drop test and I know it's kind of strange for some of you, but what you need to remember is a voltmeter reads difference in potential. And so the difference in potential between my BAT post and my battery post is 0.06 or 60 millivolts. Nothing wrong with that at all. It wouldn't matter if this read minus 0.06, that would just be with your leads reversed. And as far as a number, you guys are probably gonna wanna know a number. Truthfully, you really don't want much difference between these two, especially on a heavy BAT post. Maybe a, maybe a few hundred millivolts at most, in particular when the system's actually charging. So nothing wrong with our BAT post cable to this alternator. We need to move on to these other wires now. All right, kind of tough to get this shot, but I'm on the two pin connector now on the alternator. And the wire that I'm on is the white with the green wire that comes from the main relay. And my scope positive or voltmeter positive go into that wire and my voltmeter negative back to my intake manifold or my valve cover. And there's my voltage reading 11.96. So voltage drop on that circuit. Again, we would subtract source voltage, but this thing's not charging. So source voltage has probably dropped. And if you wanted to get a voltage drop measurement, I still have my jumper connected here. We can do that. I'm on battery positive. And all I'm gonna do is take this lead off here. And this isn't really necessary. I'm just showing you procedure. The drop on that circuit is 0.08. So of course that circuit's gonna have a little bit more of a drop because you're going from the battery into the car, into the main relay, from the main relay back out to here. There's a lot more wire, there's more components involved. So 80 millivolt drop on that circuit, not a problem. Truthfully, when I, when I generally do these with an alternator, I just wanna make sure I have near battery voltage on one of those small gauge wires. I think as a rule, I think what I normally follow is that I want to see a main power, that heavy BAT cable that equals battery voltage, and then I want to see at least one more wire go into this alternator that reads battery voltage. We can call it a control circuit if you want to. Now, we got one more circuit we need to check, and that is this bulb circuit. So I'm going to move my leads now, get you a shot of that. All right, here's a better shot of our two pin connector, and I'm now on the top wire which is the bulb circuit. And we'll get a voltage reading on that now. By the way, that wire is white with a black tracer. This is the one going to the bulb circuit in the dash. 
and you see I've low voltage on this circuit, 0 0.02. And the thing about that is I'm not sure what I should have on this. I know that the bulb is ground side controlled, if you want to call it that, by the alternator. Let's go back to the diagram, we'll talk about it. All right, as far as the bulb circuit, this is where we're measuring this right here. We're reading 0 0.02 of a volt. And we're not sure what this circuit should be. We know that this is the ground side of the bulb circuit. And at certain points in time, we're gonna have 12 volts here because we don't want to have this light lit. And at other times, the voltage is gonna be low to make that light light. And the thing about this that's missing really in this picture too is the voltage regulator, which is all internal to this. This is the entire eight, uh, alternator system diagram. There's no computer involved. There's no field circuit control by a computer. It's all done internally. And what you guys need to understand about these is sometimes the bulb circuit is needed to wake up, if you want to call it that, to wake up this alternator and have it start charging. And so my suspicions here are that we potentially have a bulb circuit problem. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give you a voltage measurement here with the key on and the engine off. I just showed you one with it running. We're at 0.02. Let's get you back to the car and, and check that with the engine off. I would think at some point in time I should have high voltage here if this bulb circuit is functional. Another thing that I've had good success doing with these is substitute what the bulb would do. And so if we think we have a bulb circuit, if we have a cluster problem, or if we have a fuse problem up here. We could take a test light right here and go to battery positive, which is really essentially what this bulb's doing. We're going to positive. And when we touch it on there, if this alternator starts to charge, then we know our problem is over here on this side of the circuit. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you the voltage measurement there first, and then I'll show you the test light test. All right, there's your key on voltage reading on that wire. You will see no change here at all. And I'm telling you guys from my experience, from engine running to engine off, you're gonna see a difference on this circuit, any bulb circuit that goes to the alternator. I'll, I'll start it back up again, let you watch it. So no change, 0.02 of a volt. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, get you a shot down here. I'm just gonna take my test light to battery positive, touch on that same circuit. All right, so here's my setup. I have my test light going to battery positive using my jumper that was in the back. Now you can use the BAT post if you want. It was just interfering with my camera. And uh, when, I, when I touch ground, this test light should light, as you can see in the picture. Okay, and so I'm gonna take this now. I'm gonna go down to my pin that is still on this bulb circuit. It's got this red insulator on the end of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch this on the pin, take a listen to the system. You'll actually be able to hear it if this thing starts to charge. Engine just got a little bit uh, lower idle speed. My bulb is dim, not really relevant for this. Take it back off. Definitely heard that alternator kick on. I'm gonna give you a voltage reading on the system. So I'll just go back now to this terminal that I'm using in the back, connected to the battery positive. I'll give you a voltage reading here. And I'll let you guys watch while I'm redoing this test. Okay, watch the voltmeter. Let's connect this test light now to this pin. And you can see we're now charging. 14 volts, I like that. This battery's weak too, so once this battery charges up a little more, that voltage will be a little higher. That's why it's really bogging this engine down, is it's, uh, 
in a way almost full fielding the circuit. Dead battery, high amperage, a lot of horsepower drain. So, as I've just shown you guys, a bulb circuit malfunction can cause an alternator to not charge. I've seen vehicles come in with this problem that have had three batteries and three alternators before they finally gave up on it because they don't know how to do proper voltage measurements on an alternator. I've seen this same condition on a Volkswagen. We now see it on a Mazda. I just helped someone on IATN recently with this kind of situation and this is the exact test I told him to do. With his car, he was having issues with the alternator, of course, and he was concerned about the, the cluster and the dash and having to go in there and checking the bulb circuit. And what I had told him to do is this exact test. And so think about it. If you do this test and that alternator starts to charge, you don't need an alternator. You don't have a wiring pro problem out here. You definitely need to pull the, cl the cluster. That was his situation. Where we're at now, we're not ready to do that. <clears throat> Let's go inside the car now and take a look at what we're missing. Okay, turn the key on first. Simple bulb check. There's nothing. We have no indications on here at all. Key is in the on position. I'll start it. My gauges are not moving. My tachometer is not moving. I have no turn signals. You know, these are all things we were not aware of up front. And I know some of you guys are thinking that why don't you just check the fuses in the first place the point is this what do you do when you check the fuses they're all good you check the wiring to the alternator it looks like it's good you're not sure about the bulb circuit that's the point of knowing how to do this it isn't always as simple as checking the fuses and you guys that are say that to me you really don't know what's going on of course we check the fuses of course we do those basic checks but in the real world it doesn't always go that way and this could have been like the Volkswagen that I had done in the past where everything looked good and it looked like it needed an alternator well we focused on that bulb circuit and we had enough evidence supported by this test that we're doing with the test light doing the bypass test that said, hey, we have a bulb circuit for sure that's causing this issue, it's time to pull the cluster. And on some of these cars, pulling the cluster is not an easy task. So think about that for you guys that have this mentality of, oh, he should have checked the fuses first. That isn't the point of what we're doing here. You know, it isn't always this easy. Yeah, in this case, the fuse was blown, as you're going to see here in a second. But guys, again, the vision here, think about it. Everything looks good. Fuses are good. What do you do now? Do you have enough evidence? That's the point. Okay, back to our diagram. You see we have a meter fuse right here that we're worried about. And uh, it's a 15 amp on a 97, 10 amp on a 95, 96. And that is in the fuse, blo the fuse block, which is the left kick panel area. So we're going to take a look under there and see what we find before we go toward the cluster as a problem. So we're worried about this. In fact, with all of those other things not working, we're pretty sure it's that. Let's take a look. All right, this part's gonna be tough to shoot here. I'm laying underneath this tiny car. I'm using a test light, it's my favorite tool for locating blown fuses. And all we're gonna do is just run down the line here, look for our light to light. And what we do is we just go on the back sides of both of the fuses. So for some of you guys that are following me, you're like, I know, get on with it. But there's others that don't know. It's that simple to check a fuse. Both sides should light. And just gonna go right to it. This one right here, we're lit on one side and we're not lit on the other. And that's our blown fuse. Now, if you have any, let's go down the line here. If we have any that don't light on either side, that's not necessarily a problem. For example, you could have headlight circuit that's off, might be fuse protected. I know Honda does that. And if you don't turn the headlights on, of course it's not gonna be powered up. So we only worry about no power on both sides of a fuse whenever that's the circuit that we're worried about. 
So in our case, we're worried about the meter fuse. If our meter fuse was dead on both sides, then we would be concerned. But in this case, we don't have any circuits like that anyway. We just have this one here. This is definitely a blown fuse. So we're gonna pop this thing out, put a new one in, and see the result of that as far as our charging system and everything else. All right, we have the new fuse installed. I'm gonna turn the key on. You notice we have dash lights that we didn't have before. And I'm gonna start the car. Let's watch our tack. Tack is operating now. We do have a check engine light on this vehicle too. Something else that will need to be looked at. Let's see if our turn signals work. They do. And let's go under the hood now and see what our charging system voltage is. Okay, my lead connections, I'm still meter positive is going to my jumper wire going back to the battery and my meter negative is this black connected right here on the valve cover. You see I'm reading 14 volts. So that is a fix as far as the charging system goes. But the reason why this thing died on him is that fuse blew. Now of course something caused that fuse to blow and we're gonna have to look at that too. I think what I'll do is I'll make that a separate video. We'll, we'll walk through the uh, short to ground test on this circuit. That's if I can even find it. Depends how intermittent it is. Worst case scenario is we can't duplicate this as I send him away with an extra fuse and have him bring it back to me if it blows again. I work with the guy, so I have that luxury. Um, but that's, that's good, 14 volts on the charging system. Unfortunately, guys, in our field, there's a lot of people that would have put an alternator in this already before doing these checks. You know, probably put a battery in it too. I get that all the time. You know, car comes in with a dead battery, everybody wants to automatically replace the battery. Well, here's an analogy. Your kid has a power wheel and you charge it, right? You plug it in. Well, when the kid, when your kid's power wheel's battery is dead from driving it, do you replace it every time? And the answer is no. I mean, sure, car batteries aren't meant to be deep cycled like that, but one time that battery goes dead is not gonna kill it. So we don't need to rush and put batteries in cars and throw parts at cars and put alternators in. Again, I, I know I've said this, but I've seen this kind of symptom with three alternators and three batteries and just a basket case by the time that I would get it. And you just gotta be aware of it. The bulb circuit is the turn on for some of these alternators. So while we're talking about the bulb circuit again, why don't we look at it now with a good working circuit so we have a good baseline to go by. And what I'll do is I'll get you back on that bulb circuit wiring. We'll look at the voltage with the key on. We'll look at the voltage with it running. And uh, I'll just keep you where you're at. I think you guys will be able to see that. I'm gonna take my yellow lead off of the, off of the battery and I'm gonna take this down to my bulb circuit. I'm gonna leave my ground connected where it is. This is my bulb wiring. I'm still connected to it from before. There's your bulb circuit with the engine running. 13.6. 13.7. And uh, let's think about that for a second. We have three wires on this alternator and I know it's grounded on the housing and you know the ground issue wasn't the case with this car. Something to consider though too, if, if you have a no charge and all your voltages are correct is throw a lead on the housing of the alternator, compare it to battery negative. In this case, you're gonna wanna have a jumper to go back to the battery, it's in the trunk. Do a voltage drop test on the case. We don't need to do that here. Think about this, this car comes in, VAT post, you have battery voltage. The wire that goes to the main relay, you have battery voltage. And the bulb circuit, you have battery voltage. You're done, the wiring's good. Check the housing for your ground and then put an alternator in it. So there's your voltage level. What's keeping the bulb off, guys, is two power feeds. So if you look at this diagram real quick, 
we're powered here by this meter fuse that I just replaced on this side and then we actually have voltage on this side of the circuit too so it's either the alternator is sending voltage or we're just not giving it a ground now I don't know enough about the internals of the regulator to answer that well, I might be able to with some other test light tests uh, let's take a look at it with the key on engine off and see what it looks like and remember key on engine off would be when you want your bulb check all right we want to see that light light key on engine off so I'm expecting a ground on this circuit so let's see what it looks like I'm just gonna reach in turn the key on that is key on engine off it's 0.72 of a volt and my guess here remember we had 0 0.02 on this when we started my guess here is this circuit now has a ground. Let's look in the dash, see if this charge light is on. Yes, I do have a charge light that is on. It has a little picture of a battery, it says charge underneath it. And uh, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Take my test light to battery positive. Still got my jumper back here from before. What I suspect is this light's gonna light on this alternator. Make sure your light works before you do testing. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna touch it on this same circuit. Now if that's in the shot or not. And uh, just rest it on there for a second. All right, I have my test light leaning on that on that pin, and you see my light is lighting. So with the engine off, we have a ground on that circuit, okay? And with the engine running, there is no ground on that circuit. And again, I don't know the internals of this regulator. That is somehow turning on this voltage regulator with that missing bulb circuit this alternator will not charge this Mazda is not the only one that does this Volkswagen Mazda I think I've seen it on GM I think I've seen it on Ford so be aware of it I think it's a real good one real good lesson little voltage drop measurements in there some alternator basics Pay attention to what you're doing. Don't be a parts changer. Now, what we'll try to do for part two is we'll do a short to ground test on this meter fuse, and hopefully we can duplicate it. We'll walk through all the procedures of, of how to know what's all on that circuit, what caused it to blow, and, and hopefully we can duplicate that. So for this one, though, I'll stop it there. Blown fuse. Again, not the final fix. We need to find out what caused that fuse to blow, but the fact is this car did not need a battery. This car did not need an alternator. Almost forgot. I get these questions from you guys a lot, and I think it's important to cover it on this one. What kind of test light am I using for this? I'm using a regular incandescent bulb type test light. I'm not using an LED test light for this. I don't think an LED test light would work for the bypass test I showed you. I don't think it would carry enough current to wake up that voltage regulator. So regular incandescent test light, I mean you can get these at Sears for like 20 bucks. So, so hopefully that answers that question from you guys because I know I get that a lot. So thank you very much. Hope you guys like that.